is conserve wildlife, that wild animals, and their habitats, which means wild fauna. At Mount Elgon Conservation Area, we fully execute the mandate. Where we are right now is in the Kapchorwa District, Closed Quen District, within Mount Elgon National Park. It's part of Mount Elgon National Park, which at the time of acquiring these estates in 1996, part of this area was heavily degraded. Now, one of the activities we had to embark on is to restore the degraded areas by planting trees. As you know, one of the reasons we conserve Mount Elgon is to ensure that Mount Elgon continues to provide water, Mount Elgon continues to provide rainfall, rainfall that fills up the numerous rivers, the rivers that many people within the downstream, many districts within eastern Uganda survive on. So restoring this area required that we do it with the people that were within these within surroundings. And we introduced a program called Taunja. Taunja, others called Tonja, evolves around engaging the local communities that are surrounding the conservation areas, which we want to, uh, to, to, to restore by identifying and allocating plots within the areas where we have planted the trees. And the communities do the job of taking good care of the trees until when they grow up. But as they take care of the trees, they also grow crops. They grow crops that are compatible with the growing of trees to make sure that they all benefit. Where we are right now, we have Irish potatoes, we have barley, we have passed Kumawiki, and they grow in season in, season out. Here there is a lot of print of rainfall. <coughs> For that matter, cultivation, harvesting is a continuous activity. This Capquata area where we practice Taunja is an area of about 1,000 hectares, which is equivalent to 10 square kilometers, and out of this, about 250 hectares are about to be harvested with the trees. Uganda Water Authority will earn revenue after caring for these trees for more than 15 years, but at the first stage, for about five years, communities were earning revenue from the crops grown within those trees. The program of Taunja is quite long. It begins with establishment of nurseries, transferring the, nurse, the, the, the seedlings to the gardens, and later caring for them. My colleague will share with you the details of doing that. It's this same program that we think will help us to expand our mandate of conservation, our mandate of restoring the degraded areas in other districts such as Namisindwa, Bududa, Sironko, Mbare, Bramburi, and here where we are in Kwen, including uh, Buko, which is in our neighborhood. We believe that the communities that have been encroaching the national park can now participate in its restoration as they get an opportunity to continue doing the cultivation until probably two, three, or four years, depending on the type of tree we have, we have planted. And then we leave the forest to continue regenerating. And we call upon all the leaders all the development partners, and we hope they will support this project. 
one key hope that we have ahead, even after the communities have harvested the crops, have stopped cultivating, and the peas have grown up, there is now a global carbon market which, is, which offers a great opportunity that the trees that the communities have planted, if we get better markets, better dealerships, we can have continued earning through carbon credits. And we can only see that dream if the local communities, the current encroachers, remain willing to participate in this program of restoring Mount Elgon Conservation Area through Taunja. Thank you very much. Taunja is being practiced only here in the Mount Elgon National Park. It's common with areas that have been heavily degraded and there is a desire or a plan to restore. So you may not find it in other national parks or other protected areas. And it has been very successful here. Well, the communities who participate in this, after three years, or that period of three years, they are expected to have already earned what can help them identify other livelihood opportunities of which they can continue to depend on. Here, they really get good harvests or bumper harvest every season. And they expected that during that period of time, they would be planning what else they can do, maybe zero grazing. So that's why we have to work with or work with other government agencies that promote livelihood projects, like Minister of Agriculture. <clears throat> but as I mentioned, these carbon markets offer a great opportunity. But it's an emerging market. It's an emerging issue of which Uganda has joined. And we strongly believe that with, in, con, with continued collaborative management of these wildlife, these wildlife resources, the communities will be able to be represented and we negotiate better terms on how we can have carbon credits that are shared. A good example of sharing of revenue from carbon credits is in Chibari National Park, where a program supported by First Foundation then from Netherlands has done a great deal in generating carbon credits and payments and money being earned is being shared with the local communities within Kamwenge. So if the communities around here support this, they will, yes, at the third, fourth year, stop earning from this direct harvest, but continue to earn from carbon credits if there is well-structured negotiated agreements or contracts with both the buyers, Uganda Water Authority, and the communities. At the moment here, we have plantations for both softwood, and also, as you saw in the nursery bed, we also have natural trees. This estate was previously under the forest, uh, department. forest department, and it was a forest reserve before it was gazetted or upgraded to a national park in 1993. At the time of gazettement into a national park, the number of programs that, were be, programs that were being carried out by the forest department at that time. And Uganda Wildlife Authority acquired some of those programs, which included planting some of these softwood species. So we continued with them because of the benefits that surround them too, because of revenue that we can earn from it, and because of their ability also to absorb carbon. But we also plant in large scale indigenous trees. These softwood plantations also generate seedlings 
or from our nursery beds, we have seedlings that can be shared with other partners, other stakeholders, other local communities who may want to plant some of these and definitely would not be interested in indigenous trees. So we have to have a cocktail of products and services that can be appreciated by the community that even surround us. That's why we have a mix of them. As I said, over 7 billion is expected to be earned from about 250 hectares that were planted more than 15 years ago. Yes, that money for the moment is the revenue to Uganda World Health Authority. As you are aware, like any other national park, Uganda World Health Authority continues to share what we earn from this protected area with the local communities. All the tourists that come to Mount Elgon because of its beauties, a certain percentage of what they pay, 20%, is put in a pool, revenue sharing accounts, and later shared with the local communities. So we have both direct and indirect benefits that we ensure that they get available to the communities that surround us, who together will conserve this protected area. And it's a game. Many times because of scarce resources, it makes us enter into a conflict with some of the community members, especially those who want access resources illegally. Many times in the process of arresting communities who are participating in the criminal activities while in the park, a number of our staff, a number of our personnel, our rangers, have gotten injured, others killed. Since 2002, we have a record of over 15 rangers that have been killed using pangas, using stones by some of those communities and all happening inside the park. Unfortunately, we have a list of about 35 rangers who have been injured and they are now counted as people with disabilities because of pangas from criminals, because of stones from criminals, because of holes from criminals. Our rangers are very vulnerable when they are executing their duties because whereas they possess guns, they always do what they can to ensure that they don't use those lesser weapons. They could shoot in order to avoid attacks, but they don't rush for the guns. Unfortunately, in the effort to preserve life, they end up losing their lives. Certainly on the side of communities, we also have some who get injured in the process of fighting, in the process of attempting to arrest them. And some of these programs we are talking about, like Taunja increasing benefits, is to divert all our services from the confrontation. We hope the future will be bright. Which area are we talking about? Where this is happening? Uh, the the, 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 death, the death and the injuries that have occurred are all distributed across all the eight districts that surround us within the Bugisu and Sebesa regions. So there is no district where we've had a spared life. <laughs> but over time, the trend is that it is reducing, it is declining. National Park where all this is happening. The Chief Warden? Me what I wanted to talk about because my First introduce yourself to us. This is your name. I'm called Soita James. I'm the Assistant Warden of the Tulu Plantation which is based in Kampata here. The trees which we have been raising, as you checked in the nursery, we have been raising both indigenous and soft food species.
Soft wood, we raise them for purposes to production, that's for harvest after a certain period of time. And uh, one of our objectives is to raise a viable forest for, for resources to save the natural forest. As much as we're also planting those other indigenous trees, when we have a soft wood, which will be covering the natural forest, somebody, instead of going to get the resources, will be getting them from the soft wood plantation. Those are the branches. Then also when they're harvesting, they'll be getting firewood, especially ladies. So on the, after harvesting and we get permission through the line, through the chief warden, we identify the beneficiaries having meetings. Then after getting meetings, LOCs generate the list. Depending on the area which we have, we calculate and we see how much area we have. Then we go back to our leaders, they come and vet the list. Then they reduce the number equivalent to what we have. Then we form a committee, then we come and allocate the plot. Planting and the seedlings have already established. The soft wood trees which we plant or plantation, we have mainly to press as out in Cyprus. We have pine, pine spatula, we have eucalyptus. Those are the main ones which we are raising here. Then the indigenous trees, I can mention just a few like four only. We have elegantic, tisolea, we have cordia, we have spathodia, we have nibotania, bradelia, micrantha, and prunus africanus.